Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. Um, continues, Ethereum continues to be in this um, yeah, sideways range. I still count the top here on the 15th of May as a way four. That might change. I mean, there are multiple possibilities how we can count this because it is so corrective. So whenever you have a very corrective structure, multiple possibilities exist and it then doesn't make sense to go through all of them because it is often more useful to just identify the key pivot point. And the key pivot point, the key decision point for me is 1847, which means as long as we stay below 1847, we can focus directly or more directly on the downside. Um, in this particular structure, yeah, in this ending diagonal and the overall target range sort of is around 1660, 1690. Um, but we need to see how price is going to react to that price range. Um, here, honestly, this is again very, very corrective. This could have been an A wave down. This might be a B wave up and we could see a C wave down. But again, very, very speculative. Um, I said yesterday in a... Um, in one, I think it was in the last video, but also in on Telegram and Discord, that it's getting increasingly likely. I mean, the longer this move down takes, yeah, it gets increasingly likely that we are going to see here something like a higher way four. That's the possibility we explained in yesterday's last video that this fourth wave might get a little bit higher, yeah, and that all we're doing here is just an A wave, a B wave, and this is a C wave to the upside. But also for that, it's very slow. Now, again, it could always become a WXY or that we get a higher B wave here, yeah? that this A wave, which was printed on the 25th of April, actually did sit here. Yeah? And we're now pushing higher in a B wave and would then come down. And this is all possible. But the thing is, as long as we stay below that pivot point, below that decision point at 1847, we can focus on the downside. Just be aware it's going to be a, a rocky road to the downside, actually. Um, and probably to the upside. So unfortunately, um, price action isn't very easy at the moment. And this could take a while. I mean, um, if, you know, because we, we see corrective movements to the upside, we see corrective movements to the downside. Again, it all takes a lot of time and needs a lot of patience. So price action remains a challenge, but the focus for me is on the downside as long as we stay below 1847. I think that's a clear statement. Um, and tentatively bullish above 1847, because as I highlighted, a bullish possibility exists as well in five waves up, but we need to see the five. If we only see three, it is going to be the high wave four. If we see five, yeah, you know, then it could become a wave one with an ABC structure to the downside in a wave two, and then we can take off afterwards. Okay. But it needs to prove that it needs to prove that. So this is the the idea you know below 1847 focus down above 1847 unlocks a higher wave four unlocks a high b wave or even something more bullish but before we establish something more bullish or really consider that with um let's say high probability we need to see the five waves up and the three waves down looking on the micro level here if we go to the one hour chart i think what we can do at least to get sort of an idea when a breakout could occur is we have here a possible, you could call it ascending wedge, which might actually break to the upside. They often do that. Uh, sorry, ascending wedge, descending wedge, descending broadening wedge. Um, they tend to break to the upside. Let's see. And then again, 1847 will be next key resistance. Yeah? Um, this is one these don't happen very often, but they are typically patterns of exhaustion. And again, typically they would break to the upset. Not always, but yeah, maybe in 75% of cases. Let's see. Um, but it's not, a, you know, this can, until the breakout occurs, it's just going to be range bound. So this could be something like that, something crazy, yeah, where we see um, a highway four and things like that. So let's see. Um, unfortunately, difficult, a lot of uh, short-term volatility here. But if you look at um, volatility in the greater context, really, really low volatility at the moment because yeah? we're just sort of range bound here. But yeah, there is not much more to add at this stage. Next week, at least, we have some catalysts. I think we've got the piece, core PCE data again, inflation data coming out, a few other things 
I mentioned yesterday. So hopefully we see, we see some movements next week. I don't think we see much this weekend, I'm afraid. But you never, you know, we never give up, give up hope. But yeah, hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.